Hey, I'm doing a video today on the top five mistakes that new cooks make in the galley. Uh, stay tuned at the end of the video. I'm going to have two honorable mentions also. So what I did was I took all the mistakes I thought people made and I also kind of did a uh, survey of the guys that I work with and some other people in the maritime industry just to get an idea of what they thought the biggest mistakes were that cooks were making. So here we go. Number one, lack of preparedness. Everything will take longer if you aren't prepared. Make sure you do things like read your recipes all the way through before you start them. And then do all the prep, chop the onions and the celery, shred the carrot, get everything done, and then you can start making it. You're also making sure you have everything you need before you get halfway through a recipe and realize you don't have something. Get your frozen meat out of the freezer a day or two early. Put it in the refrigerator or the walk-in. That way it's got time to thaw. And you're not sitting there the day of wondering what you're going to make because it's still frozen. If you know what you're getting at the store, it's going to be a lot easier than if you go to the store and just wander around for eight hours. So make sure you have a list. You know, do these kinds of things. If you know when you're going to get to the dock, ask about mealtime changes. If you're going to get to the dock at, right at dinner time, they may want to have dinner earlier or later. So being prepared for that kind of thing is going to be really important and make your job a lot easier. Doing those types of things, just think about being prepared, which leads into number two. Number two is lack of punctuality. It doesn't matter how good your food is if you can't get the meal out on time. Nobody wants to wait an extra hour to go to bed because you want to make fancy gravy. Sometimes there's cargo breaks. The guys come off deck. They've been working cargo in a port. They get off deck at, say, 1800 for a half an hour dinner break. And it needs to be ready at 1800 or 6 p.m. if you're a civilian. If you're uh, on a boat, you're doing shift changes. And shift changes, basically uh, change of the watch. So we ha we do that a lot of a lot of them fall on dinner time or breakfast time, and everybody wants to eat and go to bed or they want to eat and they go want to go on watch, and if you're holding that up, uh, people are going hungry. So it also means a lack of punctuality also means getting up on time. So you know be a grown man or a grown woman and get yourself out of bed when you need to make breakfast. That's number two. Number three is a lack of cleanliness. Cleanliness in the galley means several things. It means keeping your galley clean, but it also means keeping yourself clean. If you keep your galley clean, you're going to avoid foodborne illness. If you get everybody sick, you're not going to have a job very long. You know, clean out your fridges on a regular basis. You don't want to start smelling things coming out of your refrigerator. And you don't want things to grow in your refrigerator. So... Wipe down your table and your countertops with a bleach solution. Keep yourself clean. Clean as you go. If you clean as you go, it's going to be a lot easier to keep everything clean. Clean your dishes after every meal. At the end of the night, there shouldn't be anything dirty in your galley. Keep your oven clean. Keep yourself clean, okay? Uh, make sure you're taking a shower. If, on my boat, the rule is that even if we're low on water, the Cook always has priority of taking showers. Uh, keep your hands washed. Wash your hands on a regular basis. Watch out for, you know, cross-contamination between chicken and then fixing a salad. You know, I mean, you want to keep yourself clean. Wear an apron so you keep your clothes clean. Uh, keep your dishes rinsed. People don't want to get sick from the dish soap that you left on the dishes. Uh, things like this, just being a clean person, some of it's, some of it's just uh, the way you are, but some of it you need to learn in a galley. Take a food handler's course and learn something about foodborne illness and uh, being a clean person and keeping your galley clean. So that's number three. Number four is not making the coffee. You want to keep the coffee fresh. It's easy to get busy. You're making dinner. You've got four or five things going on between your salad and your entree and your side and another entree and a dessert and all this stuff and you're not making coffee and the guy gets up at quarter after five 
looks at the coffee pot, it's empty, or it's there's a half an inch left, and it's been sitting there for six hours. So keep the coffee fresh, especially for the shift changes. But just keep a, a fresh pot of coffee on all day. So important on a boat. That's number four. Number five is not knowing what the crew wants or not caring. Okay, don't be repetitive. That's one thing. That's one really key thing. Uh, when I first started cooking on a boat, I was making chicken a lot more than I thought I was. I didn't realize it because I didn't have a really good menu plan. And uh, they, some of the guys started making chicken noises every time I'd make chicken. So they'll let you know if you're making a mistake, but don't be repetitive. Uh, don't cook, you know, a half a dozen steaks medium well. Ask the guys how they want their steaks. Make them to order, you know. Uh, instead of having the same old thing for a side, make a pasta salad once in a while instead of potatoes all the time. You know, mix it up a little bit. But, uh, you know, asking what the crew wants, ask what they like, ask what they don't like. Some guys just hate onions. And it's not it's uh, not anything to do with your cooking. They just don't like onions or they don't like mushrooms. Or uh, some people have allergies, so you need to be aware of their allergies. You don't want to make somebody sick because they have a peanut allergy and they swell up to twice their size and look like a troll that lives under a bridge. Or there's also some people that won't eat certain things for religious reasons. You know, uh, Muslims don't eat pork, or Catholics don't eat uh, meat on Fridays during Lent. So find out what the crew wants. You know, not finding out what the crew wants, you're going to have an unhappy crew. So that's number five. Okay, a couple of bonus mistakes. One big one is uh, not having the ability to multitask. You're going to be making several dishes at once. I know for dinner I was doing two entrees with a side and a vegetable, and a salad, and a dessert. It's easy to let something slip past your mind, burn something, forget to take something out of the oven, out of the oven or out of the freezer if you were chilling it. Yeah, it's just really easy to do if you're not used to doing it, so you need to learn to multitask. Maybe write things down on, the, on a board or on a piece of paper and check them off as you get them done so you remember to do them. So that's the first bonus mistake. And the second bonus mistake is securing for sea, not securing for sea. A lot of guys are new to boats. They're not used to the way the, the movement of the boat and the way things move around. And uh, if you're not used to it, things are going to fall and they're going to end up on the deck. When I Even when I was used to it, when I first started cooking, I lost a pot pie to the, to the deck when I opened the oven and it, sl and it slid out and I lost... Uh, Taco meat went flying off the top of the stove with 15 minutes before lunch. So it's easy, even for somebody with some experience, to not secure properly. Uh, we have these things called pot restraints that'll keep your pots in place, but you need to make sure they're tight. You need to learn how to use them. We have non-slip matting that you're going to put down on all your countertops. You're going to put inside your refrigerator on all the shelving, on all the shelving in your pantry, on your galley table so their plates don't slide around during dinner or lunch. Uh, you'll learn about that. Uh, another thing is making sure your refrigerator is your walk-in secure. Make sure the latch is securely closed. You know, I mean, it's really easy to have your refrigerator fly open and have six half gallons of milk end up on a deck. Make sure if you're using a crock pot that you secure it somehow. Uh, I used to bungee mine into the bulkhead, which is the maritime word for wall. So you, you just need to make sure that these things are secure. And if the weather's rough, don't use a deep fryer. So learning what to use, what not to use, and how to secure for sea. It's going to take a little time to get used to cooking in it, but it's a, it's a big thing to remember. So those are my top five with two bonus ones. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or you have any additional ones that uh, you think are really important, mistakes that new cooks make in the galley, feel free to comment below. Thanks for watching.